Hi guys, welcome to another Mountain on the Street. I'm James and today I'm in training because, well, we're learning about trains. <laughs> okay, anyway, pizza jokes aside, this segment has always been dedicated to finding solutions to your transport problems and talking about stuff on the road, maybe a new road opening. But we all know that in order to move the most people the most efficiently, nothing but nothing comes close to a mass rapid transit system. So I'm here today at the LRT-1, which is the only privately operated light rail transit system in the country. And we're gonna be showing you some of the stuff behind the scenes, some exclusive access over here to show you the improvements that are being done and more importantly, the reasons why you should be trying to ditch your car in favor of something like this. So join me for the ride. It's gonna be a lot of fun right here on Man on the Street. So right now we're standing in the heavy maintenance workshop. Now this is all for pretty much the electrical work. You're gonna see the pantographs here. This is basically what touches the wires above. Now, what's really interesting about this is we've seen it all work and how it does, it touches, and the power of the train is coming from the substation. But this is clean energy, right? Because there's no combustion engine. Now, over on this side, you're doing maintenance work for the electrical side. Over on this side over here is mechanical. And then you have your light maintenance on the other side. Okay. So we just came from the heavy maintenance, the electrical portion. Now this is the light maintenance. This is every single day, every single car will come home to this area. So you got about 116 cars that's made of the Gen 1, Gen 2, and Gen 3. You can tell the difference actually by the numbers here. If it starts at 11, that's a Gen 2. If it starts at 10, that's a Gen 1. And if it starts at 12, that's Gen 3. There's no real difference for the passengers. It's just more of an internal thing as they're upgrading their system. But come with me, I'll just show you the maintenance that they do here because every single night this place is completely packed so this is during working hours for the train so this is their downtime this is the quietest time for them but come after 10 30 at night or so this place starts to get completely packed because 116 cars will go through their maintenance regime everything is checked inside and outside it's all cleaned and then it's sent out this is every single day every single car if you're power hungry, this is the room for you. This is where they generate all the power for at least this portion of it. So this is for the main depot and part of the line. It consumes the most power of all the substations. There are 11 of them out there. And this over here is part of the substation. This is what generates the power basically for the train. Now, if you look at this entire length here, the new ones will be about one fifth. So the entire thing will probably take up only that and will replace all of this. So they're getting more compact, they're getting more efficient, but get this, all right? You know how you always complain about your electricity bill at home? 5,000, 10,000, whatever it may be. Well, try 4.5 million pesos for just one substation. That's what these guys pay per month for their electricity and they have 11 of them to pay. So. about information overload. I just came from the master planning room. Now this is where they do all the planning down to the microsecond of everything involved with the scheduling, the train, the staff, basically all the moving parts of this place. Using a software they call Goal and Atoms, they're able to micromanage it down to the last second and they're able to make it run at its most efficient. But I think the key here is they're able to hit all the key performance indicators set by the DOTR. You wouldn't believe how strict they are, but they need a management tool like this to be able to make sure everything is running just like your watch does. That's very, very important. And they're right now in the middle of doing an upgrade and bringing it into the next century. So we're here at Vito Cruz Station, which is one of the busier stations in this line because you've got all the universities like La Salle and other campuses around this area. So the students generally just flock over here, which is why it was one of the first batch of stations that received the renovations for the modernization program. They've changed a lot around here. You've got a fresh new coat of paint, of course. You got great lighting now across the station and the standardization of signs over here, like the parapet signs. You've also got the uh, wayfinder signs over there and the station signages which are all now standard they've also done the ticket sales uh, booths they've all been renovated the comfort rooms it's generally designed to look and feel
feel like any other train station in anywhere this part of the world. What's important is they're setting the new standard for Philippine rail travel. Yeah, every now and then, I usually commute going home. So I usually take the LRT and then I switch at EDSA to go to the MRT. Regularly, I use the LRT. Okay, and have you noticed the improvements that they've done on the station? They painted them, lighting, fixing booth, etc. Yes, uh, I can uh, actually notice it. Um, it's better than before. is Edsa Station and as you can see behind me that's a new expansion if you flick the camera over here you'll see right where the expansion starts because you can see the difference in tiles it's all part of a greater improvement program and modernization of the station just like in Vita Cruz that we just saw but this one is actually expanding the footprint by doing that it allows a lot more space for queuing a lot of people are looking at the train to get away from traffic downstairs with their cars but the traffic was starting to build up here with the passengers so they moved it over there there's a lot more room now they've got the new signages and just wait they're going to do the same thing to Monumental Station and then it's going to be carried forward especially when they continue with the expansion to Dr. Santos and even further we'll be covering that in another vlog so stay tuned for that because it's exciting times ahead for the LRT1 for Man on the Street this is James Deacon right here at Edson Station ride safely everyone